hello. Um, some of you may think that uh, waste and waste to energy in particular are not particularly sexy. Uh, it's not a particularly sexy topic. I'm here to, to tell you otherwise and why it's uh, uh, just as sexy as uh, power to gas and uh, EV. And in fact, it sits at the interface in terms of what we do with many of those downstream applications. So waste is not rubbish. Uh, waste is a resource. We, were, we heard yesterday uh, the theme of uh, increasing uh, global population uh, increasing exponentially, uh, increasing consumerism. Uh, the waste problem is increasing globally as, uh, as the middle classes also increase, whilst at the same time uh, our natural resources are in, in steep decline. We've embraced this shift from, uh, from waste to resource management. This is all happening at the same time as we need to generate energy in a more sustainable way, uh, in a continuous way, and in a cost-effective way. APP was formed in 2005. It was spun out of a company called Tetronix, uh, which is itself a 50-year-old uh, British engineering company. Uh, we operated a pilot, pl pilot plant in 2005 and operate a plant in Swindon uh, since 2008 uh, with a gas engine operating at the back end. Our objective is to be a leader in the waste uh, to energy and waste to fuels uh, marketplace. Uh, for responsible resource management, and we're currently developing uh, a number of projects uh, in the UK and, and overseas. Tetronix, just very briefly, uh, as I mentioned, around 50 years old, uh, a global leader in plasma arc uh, technology in an environmental application context. Uh, it has 80 systems uh, installed globally, many of them operating for many decades now with very high levels of availability. Uh, and of course, and I'll tell you why plasma is a component in our, in our process. The areas of application for Tetronix, uh, uh, gas plasma is what I'll focus on today, but historically, uh, a great deal of experience in the vitrification of incinerator ashes, IBA in particular, and fly ash, uh, but also in the vitrification of intermediate and low-level nuclear waste uh, to form a stable, non-leaching, uh, inert product, uh, and various other applications, particularly in the hazardous waste context, so treating uh, particularly problematic waste streams like spent pot liner, uh, uh, organic materials, uh, and also heavy metals uh, and for, for metal recovery purposes as well as precious metals for metal recovery purposes. And those images at the bottom are some of the installations uh, uh, that Tetronix has around the world. Just a very brief overview uh, of uh, where those installations are. So these are uh, both Tetronix installations and also the installations of our gasifier supplier, EPI, a US company. Uh, so between them, about 180 uh, reference sites around the world. Um, conventional uh, energy from waste or mass burn incineration is, is, is inefficient. Uh, it employs a steam cycle to generate electricity indirectly. Uh, there is typically no recyclet removal, uh, so that uh, there's a high volume of residual ash that's produced. Uh, it's inflexible. It, it's only an on-site combustion solution with on-site power and heat generation. Uh, there are concerns over emissions, and it uh, it's, has a very high visual impact and uh, is, is deeply unpopular. How are we different? Uh, it's quite neatly summarized by a quote uh, from Fichtner, uh, who we've worked with for, for many years now. Uh, we produce a gas from waste that's clean enough to use directly in gas engines or gas turbines for power generation. Why is this important? Uh, these aren't our numbers. These are from a, an AEA technology report in 2010. Uh, you'll see that the generating efficiencies uh, set out there in the middle column Steam cycle up to about 25% efficiency. Uh, gas engines, uh, around 40% conversion efficiency. Turbines up to 50%. And the ultimate goal, the panacea, being the use of syngas in gas engines, uh, sorry, in fuel cells, uh, with up to about 80% conversion efficiency expected. Just briefly on the process, how do we do it? We uh, take a pre-prepared feedstock, a refuse-derived fuel, um, where, where recyclates, in particular inorganics, metals, and glass, have been removed. That is fed into a gasifier, in our case it's a fluidized bed gas gasifier, where a crude or raw syngas is produced at about 800 degrees. That's fed into a plasma converter, a separate stage, uh, as well as the ash arising from the, uh, from the gasifier, both fed into the converter. The temperature of the plasma arc in the middle of the converter is about 5,000 to 8,000 degrees Celsius. The temperature in the melt pool is about 1,400 degrees and in the gas space in the furnace is about 1,200 degrees. That high temperature and the intense UV light from the plasma crack organic 
molecules in the, t in the dirty uh, crude syngas uh, to produce a very clean syngas, uh, very high in hydrogen, uh, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide. We don't use air in the gasification process, so there's no nitrogen in our syngas, and we have a, a, a CV of about a third of natural gas. Uh, the uh, gas is then fed into a, uh, uh, in this particular scenario, into a uh, power island for on-site power and heat generation. This is probably my favorite slide, uh, which uh, demonstrates the effectiveness of the plasma converter. These are samples taken of syngas, both pre-converter, so exiting the gasifier at our plant in Swindon, uh, and post-plasma converter. And you can see the relatively elevated levels of toluene and hexane and phenol uh, in the left, on the left-hand side, um, with the, their parts per million uh, uh, in, in terms of the y-axis. And then post-plasma converter, barely detectable levels of those same organic uh, constituents. So they've been cracked into a very clean uh, CO and hydrogen-rich uh, syngas. The other output, and the only other output from our process, is a solid vitrified product, called, which we've called plasma rock, uh, which is this, this material here. It's an aluminosilicate, uh, which is mechanically strong and extremely leach resistant. The Environment Agency in the UK has classified it as a, as a product and not a waste, and we are uh, currently exploring a, high, a number of high-value end uses uh, for that material. The technology uh, we see, and I mentioned at the outset why, why we're just as sexy as the others, we're a, we, we're a gateway uh, technology converting waste into two resources. One is a solid product, the other is a gas with multiple applications. That syngas uh, can be used as a constituent in a chemical process. Uh, it can be, uh, uh, the hydrogen can be separated uh, for use in hydrogen fuel cells or in the hydrogen economy generally. Uh, we can use the syngas in high temperature fuel cells, uh, in particular solid oxide fuel cells. Uh, we can convert it to methane or substitute natural gas, which is a, product, a project we've uh, just begun to undertake in the UK uh, with National Grid, uh, or into liquid fuels, for instance, aviation fuel. Uh, we're also engaged in a project in Belgium, uh, which is uh, about mining a landfill site, uh, where the, the concept really of, of, of landfill being the storage of waste for future recovery of both energy and materials. Uh, we will, over the course of 25 years, completely remediate that landfill site return it back to nature, and in the meantime produce lots of green power and uh, a bit of this material as well. Uh, in terms of the greenhouse gas comparison, it's, uh, uh, there is a significant uh, uh, improvement to the do-nothing scenario of leaving the waste in landfill, which produces methane as it decomposes over many years. And, and finally, just a summary, really, of our, uh, of our USPs. So we absolutely embrace the whole zero-waste uh, shift, to produce uh, no residual ash from our process, uh, instead produce a solid product, thereby um, achieving complete landfill diversion. Uh, we're a gateway technology, a syngas with multiple applications. The process is patented globally. Uh, we, op we optimize the use of waste as a resource, achieving high efficiency conversion. And finally, we're a low impact solution. Our building height is between 12 and 15 meters for a plant processing 100,000 tons per year of RDF, which allows us to locate close to uh, both the waste arisings, uh, but also to the uh, possible heat users uh, to operate the plant in CHP mode. Thank you for listening.